Hey there guys, it's your favorite backyard geographer again. You know, sometimes people ask, how do we understand and differentiate the layers within soil horizons? Well, you're in the right place. Today we're going to learn how to understand soil horizons and their development. So let's begin by understanding the images that we have in front of us. The first set of images on the left hand side just represents soil horizons and their development through time. Note that at the beginning, the first column, it's very simplified and as we move farther to the right, we see newer layers have been development, root patterns by vegetation and things along those sorts. Uh, the image on the far right represents a traditional soil horizon set, uh, including everything. Now what's important to know is that not all soil, so when you dig down in your yard, you're not going to necessarily have all of these in a specific depth or even have them all in place. It really depends on the environment in which the soil develops in. So as an example that I use in my classes a lot are deserts. And deserts do not have a lot of organics available, so therefore you're not going to have a rich organic layer or even a topsoil. So those are things that we'll talk about in a moment, but I first want to introduce how these images are set up. So my plan is to first introduce soil horizon development through time, and then we're going to wrap up with just looking at all the different layers and what these little letters mean and their definition. So let's begin with this first column. So I'm going to speak specifically to the imagery and we'll talk about the letters later. So as we can see, a majority of what we see here is solid rock. That's going to be our parent material. That's what our continents are made out of. And we can see on top there's a little bit of brown on top, fine gray material. Well that's because we have a little bit of material that's been brought in due to weathering and erosion. We also may have a little bit of organics, meaning fresh leaves or plants that may be on the surface that are undergoing decay. Well through that process of decay they're going to release acids and other nutrients that will help break down additional parent material. We also will have, because of rainwater and other water that comes into the surface itself, you will have drainage that will actually infiltrate or seep in and bring in nutrients and mix within this rock layer. Well, over time you will have additional organics and different material brought in which will really create a distinguished layer as we can see a top dark brown, a medium, and then another layer with a mixture of rocks and then our parent material is still present. So we're not really losing our parent material, we're really adding on, but in that process of what we consider infiltration and these processes of water bringing nutrients down and dripping in between and, and layering and moving it, we start to create very distinguished layers, much like you would in a salad dressing. So as time progresses, more and more material will be deposited due to erosion and weathering of nearby material. We can also see at this point we've got some interesting root systems that have come down and grown. Uh, in doing so, they're going to be, you know, in this plant material, this diagram is representing uh, roots that have to go down very deep in order to get to either water or the nutrients needed to allow that plant to survive. We can also see down here in this our last diagram we have some roots that have gone very deep but the plant no longer exists we have some fresh vegetation on top that's really you know integrating in that cycle but the key is you know with, when looking at soil horizons is that I know that this is a cartoon type image where it's very distinct the differences but the reality is it really can be that distinct when looking so I want to speak about this last image first. So here we can see there's solid rock material. And then we have a mixture of rock material and other material that was brought in. It could have been brought in by flash floods. It could have been brought in by wind, any form of erosional and transportation agent. Well, and then you would have had a mixture of organics. And then over time, more material would have been deposited on top of that. And then you know, through leaching and through that infiltration and transferring of material and nutrients, you start to create these different layers. Which brings us to this image on the far right, which is like a traditional perfect, it's got everything in it. You've got some fresh new stuff on top that's really rich in nutrients. We're going to have a medium layer of mixture of what's considered eluviated. We're going to have some subsoil, which is a mixture of rock and traditional dirt and a little bit of organics uh, and as to what's been leached through. Then we get into this much harder where you start digging down into larger rocks and then we hit bedrock on the bottom. So when looking at this, you know, to go through this cycle of just 
predominant bedrock and a little bit of topsoil to what we see in the far right, we're not talking just years and we're not talking just decades. We're talking not just centuries, but perhaps even thousands of years. So on average, depending on the environment, it takes about two to three hundred years for a solid inch of soil to be brought in and developed. So in some areas, we're looking at thousands of years of material that is deposited and created our soil horizons. So again, speaking to this last image that I'm circling with my mouse, I want to speak about each one of these letters and what they represent. And as you will see through the definitions, that's why we continue to add letters as time progresses through soil development. So R. R represents parent material, which is the material that soil develops from, and maybe the rock that is decomposed in place, or the material that has been deposited by wind, water, ice, the character and chemical compositions of parent material plays an important role on determining soil properties, especially during the early stages of development. Well, C horizon, the C horizon, which is atop the R, represents the soil parent material either created in or transported into its present location. Beneath the C horizon lies the bedrock. Looking at the B as in boy horizon, the B horizon is a zone of illuviation where downward moving of subsoil occurs. The accumulation of fine material leads to the creation of a dense layer in the soil. In some soils, this B horizon is enriched with calcium carbonate in the form of nodules or as layers. The next letter is E, which is not often present, but it can be. The E horizon is usually light colored, and it stands for eluviation, being the dominant process, otherwise known as leaching, meaning that as water is passing through, it's going to be taking away nutrients from that location and dropping it into the layer below, the subsoil. Which brings us to the A horizon, otherwise known as the topsoil. The A horizon marks the beginning of the true mineral soil. In this horizon, organic material mixes with inorganics and produces our top soil. The A horizon is typically very dark in color due to the presence of that decomposing organic material. And often, because of how rich that, that layer will be, Eluviation will occur of those, or, of those inorganic and organic substances which will be leached through onto the subsoil, which is why the E horizon is often present. Which gives us, lastly, the O horizon. The O stands for organic. It's primarily composed of rich organic material. Fresh litter is found at the surface, while at depth all signs of vegetation structure has been destroyed by decomposition. The decomposition of that organic material known as humus enriches the soil with nutrients that begin soil structure. All right, so let's put it together real quick. Again, we always have our parent material first. As we can observe here, we have a little bit of a sea horizon because of the parent material being weathered and breaking apart because of your O horizon adding additional acids and nutrients that help break it apart. Then over time, you will develop a topsoil and sometimes even a subsoil. It just depends on how much material is being brought in, how much erosion is occurring, how much water is being brought in, and you know what type of alluviation is able to occur. As time progresses, certain layers will become a lot thicker depending on how much material is being brought in until you end up with our traditional soil horizon on the right hand side. Again, these are traditional ideas. That doesn't necessarily mean your location may have all of these areas. As an example, living in Santa Clarita, we have a dominant clay horizon that certainly offsets a lot of how our soils work out here. Or maybe you live you know, closer to the ocean or the beach or even in the deserts where you have a lot more sand on top. So again, you won't have a traditional soil horizon as it were, but we still see that this is the you know, general development of soil horizons. Again, I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and we'll talk soon.